In my bed to you review, I singled out this effort from the glut of cash in from that fucking travesty Fifty Shades as not being, even being creative in the title. However, after no reaction whatsoever, I felt it was only fair to give it a right reply. The first thing which bothered me is that the user's section of the only quote they have in the front with the, f it, with the full one on the back, plus this quote mentioned Fifty Shades, just like Thoughtless. And if that wasn't amusing enough, this is a collaborative work between two writers, but there's only one author's photo. Who is this? One of the authors? Any idea? An idea what women suits the name? What? So I'm not in a good mood starting this. And then we have one of the most amusing openings I've ever read. Yeah, even more than that Fat and Menace one. A woman is listening to Vivaldi at high volume at 3am in the morning in her boyfriend's house and is spewed on the floor naked. So, why is... Why, if the music can be, according to the book, heard down the street as no one complained? Why is she even in this house when she doesn't live there? Why is the music on loud anyway when she's the only one there? Why is she playing this at 3am? And why is she naked? No wonder the first line, what the fuck? Our main character is Summer. No, not sum the Summer of Terminate the Terminator show. 500 Day of the Summer or Summer of Neighbours. She is a violin player who has an enormous sex drive. It's turned on by playing... The violin, swimming, running, and pretty much everyone except fat people. Her BFF is Charlotte. Like the best friend in romantic comedies, she has no purpose, interest, or personality other than sex and online poker, apparently. At one point, she answers the phone with a guy and can't answer because her mouth is full. Moving on. Our other main character is Dominic. D or Dom, I'll call him. Dom. Dominate. Get it. Symbolism! This is even pointed out if you missed it. Let's look at the Christian Grey knobhead checklist, shall we? Single? Check. Rich? Check. Never in love before? Check. Women fall madly in love on sight? Check. Complete dickhead? Check. Although I will give it credit because we'd have to suffer some bullshit sob story. Now, this book suffers from two major problems. While well, Dom's chapters are in third person, Summer's in first. Reminds me of the Disciple. Now, if that wasn't annoying enough, the same things are described twice. But some scenes are out of order, like the start of Fifty Shades Freed. What a load of shit. Second, the book looks like something written by Keith Lemon. Or Carry On. Err, matron. <laughs> ah. Things are described as wonderful fuck. Take this as an example. So that means a long one, I guess. So that means... something. All of a sudden they use the word cock. Which isn't pleasant, but don't worry, I'll find another ton of things to moan about. Summer's violin is joined by football hooligans, although it alternates between soccer and football. It's like me alternating between calling this book crap and shit. A little bit confusing, I think. It's like the time Lisa Sachs was destroyed and the Simpsons, except that was funny and this is just bollocks. Dom finds out through the paper and sets up a Facebook account under the creative name of D, um How is Summer needs a violin and agrees to meet? In between times, Charlotte and Summer go to a fetish club on a boat. Hope it doesn't sink. Everyone there is dressed in a ridiculous outfit, which just makes me laugh. Reminds of that Max Mosley case a few years back. I find the fact they're wearing rubber hilarious. Oh, they don't get rubber burns. Rubber burns? Scottish they also use this turntable. I had a few trials and produced this. They had no problem, so maybe I was going wrong. They also have a method to taking off their undies. I tried one with a robot. There it goes. Wait a minute. You're not going up right back. It's going up my... Hey! Dom goes up to buy a violin off a girl with a teardrop tattoo and enter the club. We see another person with this tattoo. So this is a reveler, a sign, a gang or something. <laughs> of course not. He forces someone to play with him naked along with a quartet and then they go to sleep together. At one point, someone goes, We're fucking, I know. And so do we get on with it. Then he says the most romantic words ever stated in a novel. One day, I will tell you to put your own finger in your arsehole. The meeting a crypt. I am the Count. Are you? Yes, I am the Count. One bat. <laughs> Two bat. <laughs> Three bat. <laughs> so are you okay with people having sex in your crypt? Of course. One nipple. I look at the women. One nipple. <laughs> Two nipples. <laughs> Three ni What? She knocks three times to enter. Is Sheldon in charge or something? 
After this, she just happens to bump into one of the quartet players called Laura Lynn. Imagine that white trash joke on Ted. There's Hove attraction between the two. Oh, right, lesbianism, but nothing happens. Oh, you cheat. I want by LL, dressed in a tight cat suit, which reminds me of a superhero movie. Now, which one? Yeah, I love Spider Man too. And his book is running out of steam. Summer goes to New York, where she takes part in the slave auction. Good to have one pound, two pounds. What's the name? Elena. Oh, crap, that's the name of Grey's old frame of Fifty Shades. Shit! And it's registered online through UPod. Is there anything they won't do? While they're busy doing this, Dom is going out with Charlotte, who shows off her pussy in public. Fuck off, you weren't funny in the 70s, you aren't now. And she actually texts the word, oh goody. Um, he gets a tip off from United is somewhere and that's it. Oh, so that's it. Oh crap, there's a sequel. Fuck.